this video <coughs> this video is again about how to make a shortwave oscillator. This is the second project and I want to make now an oscillator, a slurk tuned beat frequency oscillator. That means that I have to at first study the uh, intermediate frequency that I want to use and I want to use this crystal. It is used as a kind of IF transformer but of course a crystal IF transformer and uh, on the the body of that crystal we read 46A and that means 468 kilohertz. That is the intermediate frequency that I want to use. With this crystal and you can of course directly see that we have here two crystals. They are glued to each other and Perhaps I can use the properties of these two crystals to get a very sharp intermediate frequency amplifier. Of course the bandwidth of say um, a normal IF filter is approximately 8 kilohertz. But when you have for instance this filter it's a crystal filter and it's, it also works uh, with a bandwidth of say 8 kilohertz. You can make that bandwidth sharper or less sharp by bridging the electrodes of that filter with a capacitor in the range of say 5 picofarad up to 10 picofarad, perhaps 20 picofarad. And when you couple that uh, filter in to an IF amplifier, you can also make that filter much sharper by using a very small input capacitor from the first amplifier, say the mixer, then a very small input capacitor and perhaps a very small output capacitor to keep the properties of that filter very very sharp and with a very sharp I mean that such a filter has a very sharp peak so for instance this peak Here is that frequency band going from say uh, 450 kilohertz to 470 kilohertz and by using small input and output coupling capacitors you can keep such a filter very perfectly in the band where it has to be used in kind of in circuits of a IF amplifier. So that's my aim anyway. This is the beat frequency oscillator that I want to use and I will tell much more about it. Uh, it has to oscillate somewhere between the frequencies that this filter can handle. This filter is approximately a, uh, 800 kilohertz wide and uh, that means that my oscillator has to work, my beat frequency oscillator has to work say 5 kilohertz to the negative and 5 kilohertz to the pro uh, positive. So that's what I'm searching here. Uh, a beat frequency oscillator slug tuned 
with a coil here that has to be um, made for that frequency. But on the other hand, I don't want that this slurk, when I tune it in, has a too critical frequency band. So a first idea is, of course, when you know uh, something about shortwave technology, uh, when you make a non-critical coil, say with a broad bandwidth here, say this is uh, uh, 460 kilohertz, um, you need, and this is for instance uh, 450 and here 470, you have to make a coil in this case with that slurk tuning that when you move the ferrite rod quite long out, the frequency has to change in this band. And that means that the coil has to have certain properties. And in general we know that with less windings and a bigger capacitor, parallel capacitor to a tank circuit, this is a tank circuit by the way, so when we uh, take not too much winding, say 10, and we have here a very big capacitor, say 0 to 1000 picofarad. Um, the quality factor of such a coil is not high and it gives a kind of broad bandwidth. And here I'm searching for that typical broad bandwidth with not too much windings, a big capacitor that bridges the tank circuit. And when I stick that uh, core in and out, that ferrite core in and out, there must not be a too big ba uh, bandwidth, because otherwise it will be a big problem to tune in with this circuit on radio stations uh, say shortwave radio stations that have a small bandwidth, say radio amateurs or so. And this was the first experiment, but this co coil was too long, so I shortcutted this part of the coil, and then you can immediately see that when I take that ferrite rod out, there's not a very big bandwidth, and that's good. But the other thing to repair is that we don't have here a sine wave. So I have to do much more experiments to get this slug tuned beat frequency oscillator properly in the frequency band where I want to use it and with a pure sine wave. And there are all kinds of possibilities to adapt this circuit to get a pure sine wave. So it will take some time. I want to refer to my earlier video where I have explained more or less everything about such a simple oscillator with a <coughs> bipolar transistor here. Anyway, this is a good first setup, but it gives problems. There's no pure sine wave. Anyway, it works a little bit good when I stick in that ferrite rod. Here the frequency change, 1.1 megahertz, 7 one seven kilohertz, but it could be 
that when the uh, parallel capacitance capacitor to that coil is too high it stops oscillating. So a lot more to do anyway I only wanted to give some ideas about how to make such a circuit. in an experimental way. And uh, of course you can change the, capa uh, the, the coupling capacitor to the base, uh, the, the bias, the freque uh, fre frequency dependent voltage divider between base and emitter and emitter and ground. Much more info in the first video. Anyway, I'm sure I will succeed. Perhaps I, I have to make another coil and then I mean with say enameled copper wiring or perhaps I have to do this step here on this location. I have to find a situation where everything is ideal and especially very important when I stick in that uh, slug, that ferrite rod, there must not be a big frequency variation otherwise it will be a problem to tune in to uh, say shortwave radio stations that have a small bandwidth and um, need uh, that small bandwidth to receive properly single sideband radio signals, uh, facsimile signals, USB uh, signals, etc. Anyway.